No nation in the world will grow without its diaspora. Diaspora has always been the blessing of nations. If you think about it, everybody you know in the Bible, from Joseph, diaspora, Isaac, diaspora, Abraham, diaspora, Ezra, Daniel, diaspora, even the idea of Jesus coming down, diaspora, that God came down, diaspora, Jesus went to Egypt, diaspora, coming back home. Israel, being formed in a day, diaspora. There is no nation that has grown without a collaboration and organization of its waiting diaspora. The brain drain that we experience has now been converted into a potential brain gain. And that gain must be understood by organizing to wake up the diaspora to its socioeconomic and political destiny in the continent. The way that we work is that every year about $48 billion is sent home in remittances. That $48 billion is so huge, it's the biggest income in the continent. But guess what is coming to solve? Welfare economics. The money for shoe, for house, for rent, and all of that. And we know that anybody living abroad sending money home is sending less than 5% of his income. About 95% is still sitting dark in his, in his host country. Now, if we mobilize Africans to begin to understand that they can repatriate just 20% without losing the 5% that they have before, take another 15% and repatriate it home. But that repatriation now is not for welfare economics, it's for investment in ideas. Such that it's not just Americans who are investing in Florida Wave or in, in Jumia or in any of these countries. Africans can pull resources together and be the one funding the local ideas here. That is the association between local ideas and global relevance. The idea that we will pull funds in our brain gain and bring it home to fund ideas. So we need more incubators made by Africans for Africans, more accelerators made for Africans by Africans, intentionally searching for ideas, investing in ideas. 